Hello friends, today we will discuss design of valley curves. The vertical alignment of a road has great influence upon the construction cost, vehicle operating cost and safety of vehicles. Vertical curves are provided whenever there is a change in the gradient. Vertical curves allow gradual transition from one gradient to another without discomfort to the riders. They eliminate sudden ups and downs and also provide adequate visibility for stopping and overtaking. Gradient is the rate of rise or fall along the length of the road. It is not practical to construct a road with flat gradient all the time because in that case cost of earthwork will be enormous. Gradients are considered from the standpoint of both length and steepness and also the speed at which a heavy vehicle enters the gradient. When you design a curve, gradient must be fixed before a vertical curve can be designed. And IRC 73 suggests three types of gradients, ruling gradient, limiting gradient and exceptional gradient. Gradients up to ruling gradient are used in a normal course of design. This is the maximum gradient that can be provided on a road. The limiting gradients may be used where the topography of a place compels this course or where the adoption of gentler gradients would add enormously to the cost. In such cases, the length of the grade is steeper than rolling gradient should be as short as possible. Exceptional gradients are meant to be adopted only in very difficult situations and for short length not exceeding 100 meter at a stretch. In mountainous and steep terrain, successive stretches of exceptional gradient must be separated by a minimum length of 100 meter having gentler gradient or mild gradient. What IRC 17 suggests that the rise in elevation over a length of 2 km should not exceed 100 meter in mountainous terrain, 120 meter in steep terrain and an additional lane is required for longer length in case of steep up gradient. The code suggests different gradients, ruling and limiting gradient for 2 lane, 4 lane, 6 lane and 8 lane national highways in different terrain. For plain and rolling terrain, it can be 1 in 40 as the ruling gradient and 1 in 30 limiting gradient. For expressways, the ruling gradient shall be 2% and this gradient shall be adopted for expressways as far as possible. Limiting gradient of 3% can be adopted only in very difficult situations and for short lengths. And similarly for MDR, ODR and village roads, these three gradients, ruling gradient, limiting gradient and exceptional gradients are suggested for different types of terrain. So these are the limiting values that should be used while designing the vertical profile of a road. Now vertical curves are of two types, summit and valley. Summit curve we have discussed earlier in our session. The valley curve or sac curve is formed when a steep falling gradient meets a gentle negative gradient or when a negative gradient meets a level road or when a negative gradient meets a positive gradient or positive gradient meets a steeper positive gradient or a level ground meets a positive gradient. In all these cases, a valley curve or sac curve is formed. When the point of vertical intersection is below the road surface, it is called a valley curve or sac curve. For valley curve, visibility is not a problem, particularly during daytime. However, for night travel, the design must ensure that the roadway ahead is illuminated by vehicle headlights to a sufficient length, enabling the vehicle to brake to stop if necessary. In case of valley curve, height of the headlight above road surface is taken as 0.75 meter. This is the height of the headlight. The useful beam of headlight is up to 1 degree upward from the grade of the road. Now in normal case, this is the headlight and this will be the headlight side distance for a straight road. But when it is a valley curve going upward, then this is taken at an angle of 1 degree from the horizontal 
and this becomes the headlight side distance for the belly curve. Height of the object is taken zero, that is the road surface. And you can understand it here when the vehicle is coming down, the headlight is in a straight direction at a height of 0.75 meter, and this becomes the headlight side distance for a tangent road or straight road. But if you take the headlight at one, at one degree above the horizontal, then this is the headlight beam on a sack curve or valley curve. And this is the stopping side distance. From this point to this point is the headlight side distance or stopping side distance. Two design criteria are considered headlight side distance and comfort of driving. And length of the curve, when you consider headlight side distance, it can have two cases. Either the length can be more than the side distance or it can be less than side distance. It is similar to what we discussed in case of summit curve in our earlier session. So length of curve more than S. S here is headlight side distance and headlight side distance as I told you is similar to stopping side distance. So a simple parabolic curve is used as valley curve and equation is y is equal to a x square. So let us say this is a valley curve which is formed between a falling gradient and a rising gradient. Falling gradient is n1, rising gradient is n2 and that is the deflection angle n1 plus n2. This is the length of the curve ABC and this length of curve ABC can be taken equal to AC or it can be taken equal to horizontal projection of this curve CM. And let us say that is the length of the curve. Now this CF is equal to L by 2 N1 plus L by 2 N2. N1 and N2 are two gradients. So this length, this length becomes L by 2 into N1 and this becomes L2, L by 2 into N2. So CF, that is the total offset here, is equal to L by 2 into N plus N2, that is L into N by 2. Now at this point C, if you consider A to C, X is L and the Y offset is CF, that is equal to LN upon 2. So if you substitute these values in this equation, you get LN by 2 is equal to AL square or you can say a is n upon 2l. That is the coefficient here. So equation of parabola becomes n upon 2l into x square. And if you differentiate this equation twice, you get n upon l and that is equal to inverse of curvature that is 1 upon r. Or you can say r is equal to l upon n n is known because you know two gradients n1 and n2. So design of curve basically means determination of length of the curve L. And here this L will depend upon the deviation angle and the required side distance. Let us take the first case when length of the curve is more than headlight side distance. So let us say this consider this curve. It's a tangent meeting a upgrade here and you get a valley curve and let us say this is the point of start of the curve and that is the height of the headlight h so that is the horizontal beam and on vertical curve on a valley curve you take this angle as one degree so that is the headlight side distance s and let us say this is the length of the curve so l is more than hst so in this situation this h plus s and theta, this, this height, will be equal to a x square. That is the equation of the parabola. y is equal to a x square. And x here, if it, this is the start of the curve, then x will be equal to s. So a x square is now n upon 2l s square. And that gives you a equation l is equal to n s square upon 2 into h plus s sin s tan theta. Substitute value of h as 0.75 meter, theta is equal to 1 degree, and this is l is equal to nh square upon 1.5 plus 
plus 0.035 into s. This is the length of the curve for case 1. In the second case, the length of the curve is less than headlight side distance. Now, this is the case here. The side distance is larger than the length of the curve. Length of the curve, now this is the point of influx or you can say the meeting point of two gradient and that is the half of the length of the curve L by 2. This high total becomes S into N. This is S tan theta as we have done earlier and that is the height of the headlight. So this equation can be written like this that H plus S tan theta is equal to total height here S n minus L by 2 into n. And if you simplify this, it is twice of H plus S tan theta is equal to 2 S n minus L n or you can say L is equal to 2 S minus 2 into H plus S sin theta upon L and you put value of H and theta in this equation you get 2s minus 1.5 plus 0.035 s upon l. Now this is the length of the curve for second case when length of the curve is less than headlight side distance. The second criteria is based on rider's comfort. On valley curve both gravitational force and centrifugal force act downward and that creates extra pressure on tires and spring of the vehicle. And the effect of this on travel comfort depends upon several factors such as vehicle body suspension, tire flexibility, weight of the vehicle and speed of the vehicle. Let us say this is a valley curve formed between a tangent length and a positive gradient. And this is the length of the half of the curve. Length of the transition rather you can say. When you consider rider's comfort, the valley curve is designed as two transitions. The radial acceleration is alpha which is v square upon r or you can say alpha is equal to v square upon 13 r if you consider speed in kilometer per hour. Now this radial acceleration will change from 0 at the beginning of the curve to maximum l maximum alpha at l by 2 or length of transition. So rate of change of radial acceleration will be v square upon 13r that is alpha divided by length of the curve time taken by the driver to cover this distance of l by 2. So l by 2 upon speed and when you take speed in kilometer per hour you divide that by 3.6 so that is the factor here. Or you can say that this rate of change of radial acceleration c is equal to v cube upon 23.4 lr. Now C is suggested as 0.6 meter per second is cube and therefore L becomes V cube upon 14 R. That is the length of the curve. Now for a transition curve of the form of a spiral curve or a cubic parabola, it can be shown that L is square root of 2 R L N. And therefore if you equate these two equations, you get L is equal to v to the power 3 by 2 and to the power half upon 2.65. Now this is the length of the curve l is equal to 0 0.238 v the power 3 by 2 into n to the power 1 by 2 from the consideration of writer's comfort. But in almost all cases this length is about 75 percent of the length of the curve which we obtained from headlight side distance criteria and therefore this is generally not considered as a design parameter and therefore design is carried out based on headlight side distance only. Let us take one example. Calculate the length of the valley curve for a stopping side distance of 140 meter on a highway where a downgrade of 1% meets the upgrade of 2%. So here let us assume first that length of the curve is more than the side distance n1 is given at 0 0.01, n2 0 0.02 and therefore n will be 0 0.03. The equation for the length of the curve is ns square upon 1.5 plus 0 0.035 s substitute value of n and s. In this equation you get 92 meter. Now since this length is less than 
the length of less, this length is less than the stopping sign distance therefore our assumption is not correct and therefore the second option is that length is less than s so equation is 2s minus 1.5 plus 0 0.035s upon n substitute value of n and s is this equation you get 67 meter now this is the length of the curve which will be required from the concentration of stopping side distance if you take the second criteria that is the comfort criteria, the equation is 0.238 into V to power 3 by 2 into n power 1 by 2. V is 80 km per hour that the speed given here. N is 0 0.03 and therefore length of the curve will be 29 meter. And this length is less than the length required from headlight side distance criteria and therefore we provide length of the curve to say equal to 70 meter. So that is the final answer. Take second example, design a valley curve at the junction of a level stretch with an upgrade of 1 in 30 from headlight consideration SSD equal 180 meter. So here N1 is 0, N2 is 1 by 30 or 0 0.033 and therefore capital N is 0 0.033. Now if you consider length to be less than S, equation is 2s minus 1.5 plus 0 0.035 into s upon n and you get 123.6 meters say 125 meter and this value is less than ssd and therefore our assumption is correct now to set out this curve in field we take the equation of the parabola y is equal to a x square and a is n upon 2 l l is known here n is known 0 0.033 and therefore this equation becomes 0.000132x square. Now you can divide this length of the curve 125 into 5 or 6 parts. Let us say every 25 meter and put the value of x and get the value of y. Prepare this kind of table when x is 0, y is 0. Let us say the RL of this point is 100. At x is equal to 25, you get y 0.083. So RL of this point becomes 100.083 and so on you get this table. Now if you plot this, you can, this is the tangent meeting a positive gradient and that is how this curve is formed. And these are five points giving the value of Y. So with known value of X and Y, you can set this curve in the field. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can suggest, you can write your comment in the comment box.